So now we have covered the pulmonary and systemic circulation of the heart. And what that is essentially uh, describing or, or showing us is how blood is able to become oxygenated, remove that CO2, and then resume its circulation around the body. But what's incredibly important to keep in mind is that although blood is constantly flowing through the heart, it does not provide blood supply to the heart. Now, what I mean by that is that the blood that is primarily passing through the heart, especially on the right-hand side, it's complete, it's deoxygenated and it's filled with CO2. Whereas our heart is very heavily reliant on a good blood supply filled with fresh oxygenated blood. Now it does this via its own circulatory system and this is called the coronary circulation. So I'm going to try and keep this nice and brief, but what delivers and feeds uh, blood to the heart and to these important heart muscles are the coronary arteries. Now the coronary artery branches basically directly off the ascending aorta. So as soon as it leaves the left side of the, of the heart, it's pretty much going to be um, pushed directly into this left coronary artery to feed and supply the, the heart tissue itself with blood, oxygen, and nutrients. So looking at the right-hand side first, as we leave the right coronary artery, the coronary artery is then going to split off into two other arteries. The first one is our posterior interventricular artery. And what this is doing is that's uh, feeding and supplying blood to the right ventricle and the back, the posterior part of the right ventricle of the heart. The other main one I would like you to know is our right marginal artery. And what this does is it supplies blood to the anterior side of our right ventricle and also helps to deliver blood to the posterior part of the right ventricle as well. Looking now at the other side of the heart, we have our left coronary artery, and that's going to branch into, again, two other main arteries, trying to keep it nice and simple. The first one here is our circumflex artery, and what this does is it will branch around posteriorly, so wrap sort of around and behind the heart here, and will um, deliver blood to the left ventricle. And we also have the lad, the mad lad himself, the left anterior descending artery, also known as the anterior interventricular artery. And what this does is it provides a blood supply to the anterior left ventricle and that interventricular septum there. Now, the anterior interventricular artery also has her nickname called the Widowmaker. And the reason for that is that if there is a, a blockage to the um, anterior interventricular artery, it's called the Widowmaker because it most likely results in, in death um, due to that, that infarct. That lack of blood supply can cause a massive deterioration to, to the tissue and will just cause huge tissue death and your, he your heart will not function properly. Now, as with our circulatory system, if we have blood de uh, being delivered, we need something to remove that blood away. So what is happening here is that all of the blood will want to drain into this coronary sinus. So we have a couple of things here. With our great cardiac vein, so we have our great cardiac vein, middle and small cardiac vein. What these veins are doing are taking that blood that is now sort of deoxygenated and will transport it into the coronary sinus. And the coronary sinus then connects to the right atria. So when we're looking at the right atria and we're looking at our whole pulmonary and systemic circulation, there are actually three main things that supply blood to the right atria. We have our inferior vena cava, our superior vena cava, and our coronary sinus, which is depositing that deoxygenated blood from the heart.